Speaking of strings, so text, there are more things we can do with that. Because a string is kind of a special thing. If I create a string here, so any text here, I can of course log it to the console. That shouldn't be too surprising. Neither should the result be. I'll of course get any text here. But a string is basically just an array of characters. So you could imagine this of being an array which has the A, the N, the Y, this white space, T and so on. Therefore, we can also access string.length. And if I hit run, I get eight. So I get the number of characters, including the white space here. And this is important to know that you can use a string like a character. So you can even go ahead and add square brackets and access the element or the, let's say with the index two, the element with an index of two. What do you think we'll get if I hit run? We get a Y because remember an array starts with the index of zero. So A is zero, N is one, and Y has the index of two. Yeah, and again, we can use a string like an array here. Alternative to this approach, we could have also used the char add function, which basically allows me to do the same. So if I hit run now, I also get Y. On a string, we also can use the concat method and add a new string to it. So now if I hit run, we get any text add a new string, which certainly isn't the perfect English, but I think you understand the point that we can combine two well arrays in the end here. Of course, we can also use slice and so on, but we also get some special string methods like to upper case. What do you think I'll now get if I hit run? Well, the same text, but now converted to uppercase. And of course the same is available for lowercase. I also could run split and then the character on which I want to split. For example, the white space. What do you think we'll now see if I hit run? We get back an array which contains two strings as elements in this array. So we split this string or this array kind of on a certain character, the white space. Therefore, this white space isn't included in any of the two elements here. But the element before and after the white space shows up as an individual element in the resulting array. We also could have a case where we have a string with many white spaces. And if I lock this string, you see the white spaces are part of the text here. Now, maybe I have some string where I don't want that access white space. So I could call the trim function. And what do you think we'll now get if I hit run? Well, we ha don't have all these access white spaces in the end. Notice that we still have the white space in the middle of the text, but all the access white spaces at the end or beginning, as you will see, will get stripped out, which for example is very useful when handling user input in some kind of form where users might be or might have an extra white space before or after their name. For example, maybe they use their mobile phone and mobile phones might add an extra white space because they expect the next word and they enter the white space for you. So the user might submit a form where the name does have that extra white space. And that might lead to problems if you save this white space to the database or anything like that. And a simple check like this or a simple function like this can make sure that you trim out any access white spaces and only have the raw text without the leading or trailing white spaces. So that are some important or useful string functions. And again, check out the cheat sheet for links to resources where you can learn all of the available functions. But generally, as a string is treated like an array, you might also try out all the array functions on a string. And as just explained, some useful string extra functions where it wouldn't make sense to go through them all here. But I think you get the point and you saw some of the most important ones in this lecture.